What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today what we're going to be talking about is some buffs that you can get yourselves while you are doing PVM that are going to help you out in the long run. These are things that I use fairly regular, but also some items that I tend to not really use myself, but I know a lot of other people do. The reasons I don't use them, I'll mention when I get to them. And overall, I'm pretty certain that you guys will find some useful information in here, especially for you people getting into PVM or maybe you're just starting out. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will found some items that you should be using or you could take advantage of in certain situations. But anyway, if you do enjoy or you do find it useful, do leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new around here, and other than that, let's go. So most of these buffs are going to be PVM focused, however I'm sure you could use them in different situations as well. They will help you out in those, but of course to do that you'll have to be aware of the items anyway. These aren't going to be in any particular order, but if there is something that is kind of related to each other, I will put them together. But we're going to start off with one that you guys probably have heard of, but maybe don't know how good it really is, and that is going to be the Portent of Item Protection. The Portent of Item Protection is something that you have to make through divination, requiring a skill level of 92 divination, so it is a pretty high level divination item. However, it is incredibly useful. You make this by using 60 luminous energy alongside four prayer potions, which have to be the four dose version. It'll cost around about 55 to 60k to make one of these. However, when you die, if you have one of these in your inventory, you do protect an extra item. Now, you may be thinking, but can't we just use item protect curse or the uh, item, protect pr item protection prayer? Yes, you can do that, but these stack together. So you can end up saving yourself five items on death rather than three. If you're not using a ring of death, this item is incredibly useful, especially if you have high death costs. So if you're using magic best in slot at the moment, your death costs probably looking around about 15 million GP. Like just not ultra best in slot with 50 switches, but just with like average best in slot gear is about 15 mil. At least that's what my death cost is in a lot of situations. That being said, if you add one of these and use the item protection prayer, you can usually bring it down to something like eight to nine million GP. It's still pretty high, but it's a freaking huge saving and it all it takes is one inventory space and to turn on your prayer as well together. These are very cheap to make. I would highly recommend you bring these, especially if it's going to save you a good amount of money. Trust me, in the long run, just from bringing these along, I have probably saved way more money than I can possibly imagine. It's, it's, it's definitely something you should put onto your preset, especially if learning bosses. The next buff that can be useful in a lot of places is going to be the Penance Powder, which of course is a pretty common item to be known about at the moment, but it is something that a lot of people don't take advantage of. Now, there's loads of people I've seen doing Zuck, for example, and they take around about 10 Super Restore Flasks because they need to get through all the waves, and then at the end, they have to have some Super Restore left for Zuck as well. Super Restores are really useful at Zuck because he does drain your hit points level, meaning that your food isn't going to do as much, and also if your health drops too low, he's just going to kill you very, very quickly. That being said if you have the penance powder you don't need to take as many super restore potions the reason being is every time you take damage while this buff is active you are going to restore 2.5 percent of those damage points that you took as prayer points which adds up a hell of a lot in places like zuck with all the different trash mobs hitting on you and in lots of other places as well if you're running any elite dungeons if you're running anything basically where you're getting hit and taking a lot of damage if you need the prayer points and you want to save a little bit of extra inventory space these are absolutely worth the time and investment in the money to actually bring them along. However, they can be quite expensive. They're around about 850k at the moment, coming up towards 1 mil each. And 1 powder does give you half an hour of the buff. In my opinion, at places like Zuck, where you're making a great amount of money per hour, these are absolutely worth using. In other places, they're not something that you want to throw on every single time you go to PVM at Apple whatsoever. The next item is definitely something you would I'd probably suggest in more situations anyway. But if you find you are taking quite a few inventory, spaces up from using prayer potions and that sort of stuff then this is definitely an option you could go for as in some situations it can pretty much mean that your prayer doesn't drop like at all so it's definitely an item to keep in mind for certain situations the next item I'm going to talk about could replace the penance powder in situations where you're not making as much money per hour and you don't want to spend nearly two mil an hour on using the penance powders. Now, like I say, places like Zuck, it's definitely worth it in my opinion. But in other bosses, just like doing God Wars 2 or doing any other boss that's just a solo 1v1 sort of situation, then these might be better. You can bring along Super Prayer Renewals. I see quite a lot of people not taking advantage of Super Prayer Renewal potions. You can either get the buff from these from in things like Overload Combat combination potions and such or you could just bring one along as i do i don't make combination potions because i'm lazy you probably should do them but personally i'm just too lazy but these super prayer renewals are incredibly useful to bring along as it is going to restore your prayer points 
over a passive effect throughout the fight. This could reduce the amount of prayer you need to actually bring during a fight yourself, which means if you go to next in a solo, you don't need to bring more than one super restore flask because your super prayer and all is going to do it for you. Otherwise, you may need to bring three along and it kind of just it just saves you in inventory space in the long run. Each time you drink one of these doses from here, it is going to boost your prayer points as if you drank a potion as well. Plus, it's going to give you a passive overtime increase to your prayer points too. The next item that you could stack with this is going to be the Ancient Elven Ritual Shard. The Ancient Elven Ritual Shard works similar to the Excalibur, except rather than for health, it will give you prayer points as well. So, you can absolutely just bring one of these with you. They only cost a few mil on the Grand Exchange. Right click that in your inventory, press activate. Bringing one of these with you to certain situations is absolutely worth it, but do keep in mind it does take up an inventory space as well. I don't tend to personally take one of these shards with me to many places whatsoever, but if you are really struggling for prayer and you don't want to just keep bringing more flasks, then this could absolutely be a good replacement to consider. Next up, we have the use of incense sticks. In PVM or in combat, incense sticks are definitely buffs that you want to take advantage of in quite a lot of situations. I tend to use three as the specific ones, and those are the ones I'm going to talk about in this video. So, the three incense sticks that I use are Lantadium incense sticks, Quorum incense sticks, and Spirit Weed incense sticks. I'm going to explain why I use these three, and then of course you guys can take advantage of those buffs as well. And when I talk about them, I'll also give you a little bit of an example where I would use them. So, the Lantadam Incense Sticks does actually increase the duration of your potions. So, if you have potions like Overloads or Super Prayer Renewals, that sort of thing, these will extend the duration of an Overload, as an example, from 6 minutes from normal, all the way up to 8 minutes once you've overloaded the Incense Sticks and extended the timer. So, in the long run, these are going to save you from having to make as many Overloads, assuming you actually make use of the full 8 minutes. This means if you kill Nex in 3 minutes each time, including banking time, you're probably going to need to use 1 dose per kill if you can extend this to eight minutes you can kill next twice on one dose and that is obviously going to save you a lot of money in the long run not to mention it's also going to save you a good amount of time because making overloads is definitely a pretty long process to do quorum incense sticks are quite a lot easier to understand they increase the damage that your weapon poison will do so if you are going to a boss that is poisonable then you definitely want to be using these as of course a damage increase without you actually having to put any effort in other than activating these before you go in is definitely something you don't want to miss out on as for the spirit weed incense sticks these will increase your familiar's summoning points restore rate what this means is if you have a say a ripper demon you can just activate these before you use that ripper demon and during the fight his restore points are going to re like go back up a lot quicker meaning that he will get more specs off during a fight which overall tends to mean more dps coming from your ripper demon as well you can of course take spiritual prayer potions with you to actually do the same thing but if you stack these together if you get a couple of extra specs out of it per kill it is still going to increase your damage and it is definitely worth it if you're looking for faster kills considering we talked about incense sticks in the last one and it did have an effect on weapon poison that is exactly what this one is going to be Weapon Poison++ plus 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 is something that you want to be using on any boss at all or PVM target that is poisonable. If the target is poisonable, you want to be using these just full stop. They're just going to increase your damage by a huge amount and it's something you don't want to be missing out on. So many people forget to take these to bosses that are top of the poisonable. And honestly, anytime you're going somewhere, if you're not sure, just check the boss on the wiki and it'll tell you on there whether it is poisonable or not. I would highly suggest though you do get some of these and makes you take advantage. Advantage. What it's going to do is basically just apply a 12 minute timer to your weapons, meaning that every time you attack while you've got this, you have a chance to inflict poison damage on the enemy. This is a lot of damage increased. Like it's it's huge. It's a big damage buff for absolutely zero effort other than drinking a dose of this every 12 minutes. So if you're going to say the ambassador, he is absolutely poisonable. You want to be using this. It'll increase the damage that you deal to him. The same applies to the spinners around the room, I do believe. And this applies to a hell of a lot of bosses. This also stacks with Cinderbane gloves as well, so it is absolutely worth using this, and it will increase the amount of damage you deal, like, a lot. Just a lot. Just, just take my word for it. You can buy these on the Grand Exchange in the 4-dose version for around about 40k each, and then I tend to take them and decant them into the 1-doses. That way, when you drink the 1-dose from your inventory, it gives you that inventory space back, and it, it only costs 10k per drink. For 12-minute buff, this is, is pretty great. I would absolutely recommend you take advantage of these. The next buff that I'm going to talk about, which is actually going to be our last buff, is going to be the Defense Skill Cape. The Defense Skill Cape is something that if you don't have access to a Max Cape, or even if you do, you want to put the perk into it, is going to bring you a free Sign of Life buff. 
The sign of life basically brings you back to life at 25% of your current health. Now, this is incredibly useful because during PVM, every now and again, even the high-end PVMers are going to take advantage of this because you still make mistakes. If you're going to make a mistake during a boss fight, it is really useful to have the sign of life available to yourself so you can get through a mechanic that is incredibly punishing if you just screw it up a little bit. Rather than going to death's office or rather than just having to restart the entire fight, the sign of life will give you that extra little fallback that you could use to just continue on through the boss. For example, at the ambassador, if you don't defeat all of the spinners around the room, you are going to give him explosive blasts that are going to basically kill you. Let's just say that's going to happen. If one of those triggers and you have your sign of life, you're not exactly sure how to deal with it. You can basically just face tag this or you could try and time and a defensive ability to get through it. If all else fails though and you do actually die, your sign of life will trigger, bring you back to life with 25% of your max health and you can just continue on. Whereas otherwise you would have had to die, go pay your death cost to death and then head back in and start the fight over again. So rather than completely wasting your time or anything like that, the sign of life is something that is incredibly useful to keep, take advantage of and it only requires 99 defense. So if you do have 99 defense on your skill cape, you can use this. And then of course, if you have a max cape, then you can add this to your max cape perks. And I would say that most people do use the, the sign of life defense cape as it is incredibly useful. There is a actual sign of life item that you could bring along with you but i wouldn't recommend it as it is going to have to be worn in your pocket slot meaning that you can't use things like a god book or a scrimshaw or anything like that and i would say those at that point would probably be a lot more beneficial to you than a sign of life all right, well, there we go. That is six items or buffs that are incredibly useful and you probably want to take advantage of in a lot of situations. I hope you guys found it useful. If there is anything new in here, then do leave a like and let me know down in the comments which ones you didn't know about or maybe any other ones that you can think of that I maybe missed out. If there is more than enough, then I will make another video talking about these buffs that you guys give down in the comments and I will use your comments as the actual thing so people can see who suggested it. Anyway, I appreciate your watching. I hope you did find it useful. Like I say, if you did enjoy, leave a like, subscribe, the channel if you are new if you enjoy the music in the background then there is a link to my music channel in the description but other than that thank you all to the channel members your name will be on screen right now there is so many of you holy crap it is unreal but otherwise if you want to join the channel members to support the channel click the join button by the sub button you do get early access to videos and such but otherwise thank you all so much for watching i appreciate every single one of you and i'll catch you all in the next one see you later guys